US federal government already offers tax credits to those buying a new eligible electric vehicle. But as critics often detail, these incentives only benefit those who could afford a brand new EV. Now, Democratic Senator Feinstein and Democratic Congressman Jimmy Gomez from California have introduced a new bill called the Affordable EVs for Working Families Act. If passed, it would provide a tax rebate of up to two and a half thousand US dollars to help families across the US transition to a cleaner, greener electric vehicle. The bill is obviously only in its early stages, but it's already been supported by multiple representatives in both houses from across the US. Sadly, though, it's currently only a Democrat-supported bill, with not a single Republican representative signed on as a co-sponsor. If passed, the bill could dramatically accelerate EV adoption in the US, but right now, I don't think its chances of passing are very good. Autonomous and semi-autonomous technology are expected to make our roads a lot safer, as computers can't become distracted or intoxicated like us ugly bags of mostly water. Tesla currently offers one of the most advanced semi-autonomous driver assistance systems available in its vehicles. But as we've said many times before, that doesn't mean it's fully autonomous. But as demonstrated this past weekend, Tesla's Autopilot, like Nissan's ProPilot, GM's Supercruise and others are now smart enough to safely bring a vehicle to a stop if the driver becomes incapacitated. As several outlets report, a Tesla driver in Norway who decided to get behind the wheel while intoxicated passed out behind the wheel. The car, no longer detecting his hands on the wheel, tried alerting him but after no response eventually pulled over and stopped, keeping the driver safe until the police arrived to arrest him. That's one smart Tesla, but please, don't ever drink and drive. Like, ever. We've been asking how long it will be until electric vehicles are at a price parity point with internal combustion engine vehicles, and the general wisdom is that it's still a few years away. But Nissan just surprised everyone in the US by slashing the entry-level price point of its LEAF electric hatchback, giving the 2022 model year LEAF S40 a $27,400 starting price. After US federal tax incentives are taken into consideration, something that arguably not everyone is able to take advantage of, this makes the 2022 Nissan LEAF S the most affordable electric car you can buy today, making it $1,500 less than the Mini Electric, a car that offers far less range for the price. With incentives, the LEAF is also within a spitting distance of the erstwhile Nissan Sentra, an internal combustion engine car that's long been considered affordable by most people. Factor in some state incentives and your new Nissan LEAF could cost even less. Courier firms are an essential part of modern living. Not only do they let you send things from door to door, often on opposite sides of the planet, in as little as a day, but they've also played an essential part in reducing the number of interactions many people have experienced during COVID. Yet the carbon emissions of all of these courier companies can really add up, which is why in an effort to see couriers become more environmentally conscious, we've seen plenty of companies start to make the switch to electric delivery trucks. DHL, which already has plenty of electric vans on its fleet, has just gone one step further, announcing it has ordered a total of 12 Alice Electric airplanes from Israeli firm Aviation. The planes, which will be delivered to DHL in 2024, will allow the company to quickly fly short-haul routes between many European cities with zero net emissions. The planes are also far quieter, which could open up possibilities for new nighttime flights in some cities where jets are prohibited at nighttime. Automakers hate official recalls. Not only do they cost the automaker some serious headaches through having to deal with official regulators, but they also impact the reputation of the affected car and the brand if not handled properly. That's something GM is already experiencing with its current 2017 through 2019 Chevy Bolt EV recall. And that's before you even consider the financial cost of making good tens of thousands of affected vehicles. This week, as GM published its Q2 results, we learned just how this week, as GM published its Q2 results, we learned just how much that will be. Approximately $800 million, or around $11,600 per car requiring a fix. Given all of the logistics involved in recalling and repairing bolts, I'm assuming this will mean GM might be tempted to accept more buyback requests than it previously did. But hey, don't quote me on that. When Tesla announced it would be opening its supercharger network up for owners of non-Tesla electric cars to use, we postulated that Tesla stood to earn a significant amount of money from the act, and in the US that looks to be very true. 
While we've known for a while that the revised infrastructure bill currently making its way through the two houses would include a total of $7.5 billion of funds specifically for EV recharging infrastructure, the text of the bill just shows how easily Tesla will be able to qualify for some of that massive pot of money. The main requirement, interoperability, namely that the charging station provides a connector type that meets all of the applicable industry accepted practices and safety standards, as well as being capable of serving vehicles produced by more than one vehicle manufacturer. Sounds like Tesla's got it sorted, so watch this space. Sometimes living in a connected world is great. Your phone knows when there's someone at the door and it tells you. It reminds you when to turn on the oven to cook supper. And your electric car can even charge or not, depending on if your solar panels on the roof are generating excess power. But all of that extra connectivity comes at a cost. Vulnerability to attack. And UK cybersecurity company Pentas Partners has just highlighted six brands of connected home charging stations that showed significant security vulnerabilities that, unpatched, could have led to a malicious hacker gaining access to your charging station, your charging account information, and perhaps even your home network. Sure, all charging stations in question, Project EV, Wallbox, EVbox, EVOs, Charging EO Hub and EO Mini Pro 2, as well as Hypervolt, have all had their vulnerabilities patched, as has the ChargePoint public charging network. But our advice, if you have a home connected charging station, consider brushing up on your firewall foo and set up a separate VLAN to host your charging station on.